Which of these stories will you be wanking it to tonight? Video game sex scene. Does it do anything for you or do you just look it up on YouTube when you're lonely at night? Second, Tifa Tan X2, a game that I actually would like to play even if it didn't have sex involved in it. Imagine that. And finally, people having sex on Sony PlayStation 4 Live. Yeah, it's a thing. And you know what this is? This is Clickbait Countdown. Clickbait. 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 All right, this is Clickbait Countdown. I'm Jay LaRock with my co-host Randy. What's up? What's up, brother? Man, 2018 is getting crazy. I mean, with all the sexual harassment stuff going on, I don't even know if we should have our show anymore because you never know. We'll end up with a Harvey Weinstein moment or something. <laughs> I might get shut down. YouTube's fucking up people's channels, man. I mean, it was one thing when you saw something like him. You know he's in Hollywood and stuff like that. But when they start pulling out people like Charlie Rose and, and, and Matt Lauer, you're like, what the hell is going on in this world, man? Shit, Al Franken. I know, which, man. Which, let me tell you, is a shame because that man was a hell of a senator. Like, he was, he was, I would say, when you look at government officials, he was the epitome of the voice of the people right there. Because he would listen to what all his, like, voters would say, and he would get up there, and he didn't give a shit if they liked him or didn't like him. But he would sit there and be like, this is why, bop, 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 like, we can't do this because bop, 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 Like, he was really straight arrow, like, and it's and it's very, like, strange to today's day and age have a freaking, you know, a government official be that straight of an arrow. And then this shit happens, and he, he ended up like having to, you know, he quit because of it. Because he's like, hey, uh, you know, I shouldn't be representing you if this has happened in my past. Which, good on him for saying, like, yep, it happened. I'm not, ha- you know, I'm not proud of that it happened, and, and I'm sorry. And, but man, we lost a hell of a senator with that guy. I know, man. And, and the thing is, is that you got to imagine that with the internet, everyone, you know, search history can be looked up and things like that. What's going to happen in the next 20, 30 years is people who grew up all surrounded by internet, surrounded by cameras, surrounded by social media is running for office. It's like, oh, remember when you called that guy an asshole in, in League of Legends? That disqualifies you. But then again, we have Trump as president, so I guess nothing disqualifies unless you have a soul. That is, that is true, yeah. <laughs> all right, so our number three story is about video game sex scenes and it's funny because one of the things long time ago they would talk about was, you know that a video game uh, would really cross over when the story would make you laugh, would make you cry, would make you, you know, sympathize with the characters. But just like with everything else, it's like, you know, TNA sells too. So mm-hmm. we were looking over two different articles that were talking about like uh, controversial or, you know, well-known video game sex scenes. And I just want to get your opinion. Like, does that do anything like it like sometimes even in a movie like obviously if the girl looks good or whatever and you're like oh wow that's hot but i mean for a video game do you think that adds really anything to it besides hey it's a love story so we have to throw in some sexy i mean it it's one of those things where like when they put a lot of the scenes into the game like one of the biggest ones that they show in the article that like you linked to me is like the um the witcher 3 which when you sit there and you look at like i still have to sit down and completely play um that game but it is one of those games that when you go through the narrative of the game itself it is like so like really really like well done and it's neat because like when you're going through it, like the the main person that he's trying to like find is this woman that in the lore of the whole thing, like he was in love with her and all that, and then she like disappeared. So it was like when you sit there and you look at that in in that game itself, it made so much sense because it, she was like his love interest in the first game. He ends up like helping this other girl in the second game. And then in the third game, you actually meet up with both of them. And it was really funny to see 
how you could sit there and sleep with one and not the other, or you could sleep with the second one and not the first. And they even had like a joke thing where you could um, actually get both of them in bed together. But it was hilarious because they would go both get pissed off at you because you would try and get both of them to sleep with you at the same time. So it was this hilarious thing. And it was it was great because it did add to the narrative of the game, which was funny, you know? Um, but then you have, like, games that will have these, like, sex scenes just to have the sex scenes in them. Like, one of the biggest games where it was like, okay, it makes no sense or wonder with is is the Leisure Suit Larry games. Like, that was <laughs> a game about you trying to have sex, so it was, like, part of the narrative. But, like, when you look at that last one that they did, that Magna Cum Loud was just, like... It was such a like cheesy game to begin with. Yeah, I mean, for me, like playing in Mass Effect, I thought that that was kind of funny because, like, mm-hmm. Mass Effect, of course, had some good story to it too. But then you had all the interactions with the crew, and I liked playing um, the female as a main character. So that changed everything up because you could there are actually some females who you could like quote sleep with, uh, but it's like if you really wanted to get as many sex scenes as possible you have to play as a guy but in the end it's weird because you kind of think like when you're talking to people and you play the game and i've talked to people who played mass effect and i asked them i was like when you play the game do you try to make sure that you say the right things to make sure that you can sleep with them and they're like (laughs) hell yeah i do i want to see that shit so obviously it works because people are actually modifying how they play so they can get to those sex scenes um what was the the other, the one that made me laugh was and looking at it it's the first picture that you see in it was from Far Cry 4 and was it 4 or 3 no it was 3 Far Cry 3 and it's i don't know if you've played through Far Cry 3 so like the whole thing of the game is like you you and your your friends like go on this vacation or whatever and you go to this island and it just so happens that this island there's a, a crazy like drug dealing psychopathic kind of like warlord that's taking over this island so he basically captures you your brother and your friends and then like you start to escape with your brother and he ends up killing your brother and i will say this like one of the best, like most intense scenes happens at, right at the beginning of the of the game. And it's like you get caught and and the guy's name is Voss. He's sitting there talking to you and he's like, hey, did I ever tell you about the definition of insanity? And he's like, it's doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result every time. And then he starts like going off on this rant and all that. And like you realize your character's looking around. You realize like your hands are tied up and your feet are tied to this like rope. And the rope is uh, next to a rock on the edge of this like uh, like mountainside that you're on. And he's doing this. And you see this dude a bit away from you like yelling and all that. And all of a sudden you see like one of Voss's guys kick the rock off and it pulls the guide in. And like right before Voss does this to me, he goes, hey did I ever tell you the definition of insanity? (laughs) And then he pushes the rock off and that's how like the game starts. But as you start going through the game, like you escape this thing and you realize like how many people he's actually done this shit to and all that. And you like meet these like Islanders that live there on the Island. And one of the, and they tell you like, Oh, we've been trying to like break away from this guy doing all this stuff and all that. And you meet this chick and it was so funny because she's supposed to be this, like, shaman. And there's literally a part in the game where you're sitting there going through this, like, tripping scene. And you're going through it and you're seeing Voss and you're seeing your friends and this and that and blah, blah, blah. And then, like, the scene, like, kicks back and you realize your dude's laying there. And there's this chick sitting on top of you having sex with you. You know, the shaman chick. And I'm like, wait, what the hell just happened here? <laughs> And it's crazy because, like, the thing that was cool about that game is, like, you you figure you get to a point in the game where you kill Voss and you save your family, but then you realize, like, oh, that's only about halfway, halfway through the game. You find out who this guy Voss was working with and you, like, choose to, like, tell your friends, like, get the hell out of here. I'm going to finish this. You know what I mean? So it was, like, a really interesting game, though. 
You know, uh, something else that's interesting as far as the sex scenes was Heavy Rain because mm-hmm. I, I, I didn't play that, but a friend of mine played and I watched him play. And what was really interesting is, is that to get to the sex scene and even part of the sex scene, you control it, which mm-hmm. I figure for some guys, that's probably the closest you're all ever going to get <laughs> to actually control. <laughs> because it's like, there's a scene where they're basically like talking, right? And that's fine. And then it's like, move your hand towards her shoulder. And then rotate the shoulder to like massage, and it's like it's, it goes on and on for a bit. And it's like if you do it wrong, it's like you kill your chances. Which I guess it's a good trainer. It's like if you take off the bra wrong, you know, you should get like a cutscene where she's like slaps you and it's like it's like game over. It's like yeah, in, in Arkham City, you know, when you get killed and the Joker walks up to you, talk shit. No, she'll be talking to you like learn how to take off a bra. You gotta do that one-handed unclip. Yeah, do one hand. Right. That's a skill. That's a skill right there. Just. That's right. For you guys, if, if you could do it the one hander, there's actually a bunch of things you could do with one hand that, that can. Well, anyway, <laughs> uh, the other one was The Sims, and that's crazy because uh, in The Sims they actually have a guy, well, a group of people who put together like these crazy mods, which like realistic genitalia and and uh, toys and sex scenes. Oh yeah. So it's like basically when you get in, you can do everything. And I swear, one of the craziest things to do because you can throw parties, especially in one of the expansion <laughs> packs that's called Let's Party. You can invite all these people over to your house and throw a, a party. <laughs> and then all you do is you turn on the sex mod. Everyone's naked. Everyone's having sex. There's things flying all over the place. People are getting mad because you're having sex with the person that you're supposed to be friends with, and it, it it's great. I mean. You probably could make a reality show just based on that mod. Or I guess it'd be like a porno reality show like they have on a on a Playboy television. But mm-hmm. yeah, that was The Sims was the game that like let's see how maniacal of a person you are in killing these fake people. Yeah. I think like my my favorite way when playing, I think the either either I think it was Sims was you know, I got to a point where, like, my Sims had a, like, really far advanced career. They owned this huge house. Like, I had money out the ass, so I didn't have to worry about it. So then I was like, all right, I'm bored. What am I going to do? I'm like, I know. So I threw this party where he invited everyone over from the neighborhood. And then you move everybody into the kitchen. And then you seal the kitchen. And then you find the person with the worst cooking skills and then make them cook on the gas stove. <laughs> And watch the hilarity as a fire will obviously break out. And then, of course, the Sims start freaking out. They start calling the fire department. And then the fire department shows up and they can't get into the kitchen because there's no doors. You just barbecue the whole freaking... The fire department shows up like, what the hell is this? They like hang around. And it's funny because they they hang around outside for a bit. And And then they just leave eventually. And then they call the the fire department again. They all come back out. Is that like a... A commentary on on us as people that we play the Sims and we start off trying to be normal citizens, go get a job, get some schooling, build up your house, and then after a while we're like, man, fuck it, sex and violence, <laughs> like back to the primal. All right, I'm tired. <laughs> oh, that's funny as so. hell. All right, in our number two story, uh, there's a lot of games out there that are sex based, right? But here's the thing that you have, I, th- I call it a disconnect, because you have that mixture between the sex games that it's just sex, and you're just sitting there waiting for whatever happens, whether it's some kind of orgasm thing or whatever, different sex moves. But then there's those games where you're playing it, and you're like, man, this game is actually fun, and it just happens to have a sex component to it, to the point where you can't really show it to everybody. It's like, mm. you just got to keep it to yourself. And uh, Tifa Tan X2 is one of those games that I basically saw just searching the internet, of course, for nasty shit. And I see this game and I'm like, this looks familiar. Now, for those of you who haven't played it, it's based off a classic game called Kung Fu. And in Kung Fu, you were basically like a Kung Fu guy who was going from floor to floor, trying to get to the master. And I think it was to save your girlfriend. And Mm -hmm. basically it was one of those where... You could go left or right, and all these guys kept coming from one from the left side or right side, and you would like punch or kick. And the thing is, is that they never really hit you per se. They would like grab you, 
and you'd have to shake them off because you're the longer they hold on to you, you're like losing health. And it's like, I guess they're strangling you or hitting you with like some kind of gentle palm technique or something. But that this is what it's based off of, except in this version, you can actually do a whole bunch of moves. And it's actually pretty interesting because you actually have combos in this thing where you're doing like Hadoukens, you're doing dragon punches, you can do drop kicks, you can throw someone up in the air, grab them and do a backbreaker. I mean, it's crazy. It's actually fun game to play. Now, the sexual component is you're basically playing as Tifa from Final Fantasy VII. That's the fighting chick with the huge knockers. So what happens is that when they grab you, they're basically trying to molest you. So first when they grab you, it's like they just wrap their arms around you. But then after like a second or two, they're like pulling up your shirt and they're showing everything. And then it just gets worse from there. And then basically when you run out of health, then it's like you're left helpless for them to take advantage of you. So obviously it's made to be like sexual. It's not appropriate and everything. But the problem is, is that the fighting is great. Like when you have all these guys on screen attacking you and you're doing combos and kicking their butt. I mean, it's probably the closest that us guys in the basement get to woman power. Cause you're like, uh, uh-uh, uh, you ain't going to molest me. You want to touch these? Nah, touch this. And you're beating that. I mean, my goal was to play the game with them never getting to see me naked. And it's like, I, I was like, I don't want to see sexual stuff. I want to beat these people ass. And I think that this game should be nominated for all the people who ever have anyone like trying to mess with them, it's like mm-hmm. beat their ass and don't let them be silly. <laughs> but, I mean, what you what do you think when you saw the saw the game? Like it's it's funny because like you know when you look at it, it's that typical like pixelated, you know like type of uh, of game. But in reading the like the description and everything like that of it, I was like shit. That it does play like you know like the old kung fu. Like I love that game. <laughs> I loved playing that game. It was a fun game. Like you said, it was like you're going after your girlfriend or whatever, and you had the different things. And that was the thing that was funny about that game is it really wasn't much to the game itself. Yeah. It was you scrolled left and right, you'd knock the guys, you had like maybe those those zoos that would throw the knife that it was the only projectile you had to worry about. Um, other than the like fourth floor or whatever, where it was all the freaking insects that would fly and all that. But that that like it's it's funny as hell that like they show the one picture of like an up close of what they're doing to her <laughs> as they're grabbing her, which is funny as hell. And it's like, like you say, the thing that's really funny about it is you think about it like, oh, if it wasn't really a good game, like whatever. But it's like, damn, it's a good game. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it makes it even funnier. You know, it, to me, it's kind of like one of the things that's really interesting about like old porn, like old adult mm-hmm. films is when they put a movie into it. And it's like, seriously, yes. When you go and look at that, you're still looking for the TNA, the sex and all that. But man, I remember I saw this one that was elaborate. It was like Victorian era. They had like full costume. I mean, it was maybe 15 minutes of different scenes and dialogue before any sexual thing happened. I mean, they put work into this movie. Mm. And it's just like, you just think about the writers, the directors, the cinematographers, all these people who put all this work into a porno, where nowadays it's like, yeah, just lay on the ground on this dirty mattress and we'll point our iPhone at you. But man, mm-hmm. you know, it's the same thing with these games. People are putting in serious work. Back in the day, it was like these little cheap, little barely animated things just so you could see some boobies or something. But no, people have fight mechanics and all types of things in these games where you're like, wow, this, this is really well and put together. That's funny. <laughs> now, That's hilarious. speaking of games, man, in our number one story, another one of those things where I came across it by accident. And I didn't know it was a thing, but obviously it is. So for anyone that has the PS4, there's the uh, PlayStation Network. And they have like a live system, which is kind of like, you know, streaming where you can stream yourself and you can stream like games that you're playing. So it's supposed to be for, you know, just like anything else where you're watching like a, a let's play or something like that, but for your console. So for most people, no problem. But there's like a growing trend where people have decided to have sex on the PS4. And it's weird because I've read some stories where originally it was a mistake, like someone left it on and their girlfriend came over and they just got caught on the thing. But I don't know if that it became a contest 
<laughs> it's like, wait a minute, I could do better than they did. And mm -hmm. next thing you know, this is popping up all over the place with people just having gratuitous sex live on you know PlayStation 4 where, I mean, there's, anyone can log on to that and see that. So it's like, I don't know, Randy, what, what, what did you think about that? <laughs> Now, I remember hearing about like this way back when, and it was like as soon as the 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 PlayStation Network went live with the whole like oh hey you can you can essentially stream from your PlayStation without needing a computer and all that, and it was like funny because I remember like I think they put it live. And I think I was listening to a podcast and somebody was just like, you know, I wonder how long it's going to be before like somebody abuses the system somehow. Like he didn't even give the idea, like just said something like that. And all of a sudden here comes a story of people are having actual sex on, on PlayStation Network. Do the thing. And like, and it's funny because I remember when they were showing and they were talking about it, the one, the one picture or the the thing that's in that article the the one with the uh with the little robot in the picture like that was the most famous one yeah. of that dude and <laughs> just nailing his girlfriend her bent over because that was the thing is at first it was more like the um the second picture there where it was like full on you could see everything yeah. And what was happening is like as soon as they were like starting their stream, like Sony was was catching on to them and was just cutting cutting the uh the their accounts, like banning them out. But then but then they were starting to get creative. So then they started getting creative. So they're like, okay, we can't show anything on. So then like that's when that dude, the, the one in the in the like with the robot is he was basically nailing his girlfriend. Like you didn't see them actually having sex, quote unquote. But he was sitting there like playing with this the game with the little thing, and it was funny because he actually had the stupid little move controller and was messing around with it, you know. So like the little the little robot was interacting with him, and it was hilarious because like he was just there, and then like it took a while before they realized like oh wait a minute people are sitting there <laughs> are using this to get around <laughs> the thing. So they started like they, Sony really went down and started banning the crap out of people <laughs> with that. It's so funny. I always thought just the evolution of adult films where, you know, you'd have people getting paid and obviously people still make money being an adult film star or just adult actress or actor. But then you see like people just release tapes and then, yeah, sometimes they'll pretend that it was hidden cam or all that or whatever. They're filming themselves and they're putting it up on all these tube sites for free. And then you have these people now doing it on Xbox Live. I mean, mm -hmm. on PlayStation Live and stuff like that. I'm just like, man, I wonder if there's adult uh, film stars that are, like, upset. Like, hey, you're taking away my business here. Like, <laughs> don't give it away for free. Like, what is this? You're supposed to pay. I mean, no one's going to go into a hotel and buy those $9.99 videos, adult videos anymore, when you could just open up any app and there's people, <laughs> you know, somewhere in Texas – you know, just giving away for free, man. What's up with that, man? Yeah. Have, have some pride, man. You know, think so, about the adult workers out there. So what's really funny is, and I almost forgot to send this to you, and I just linked it to you now here. Um, what was really funny, and it's it's hilarious because it all goes in with all of this. Um, of course, good old Pornhub came out with the top trending search terms of 2017. Lord. And what was hilarious in like all the little things here is number one, Rick and Morty. <laughs> number two, fidget spinner. And another one was Twitch streamers. So it's hilarious to see that like apparently people were, were searching and, and like Rick and Morty. It's like, really? Like that's what you're searching there? <laughs> And like, and it's funny because like I get I got this from E Bombs World, which is hilarious because they always have some funny things. Like one of the guys put in the comment, like, "What the hell did somebody expect to see with fidget spinners?" And like the picture for like the search is literally a picture of a girl holding a fidget spinner, and she's wearing a shirt, and literally has like two of them taped to her <laughs> to the front of her tits, so they look like they're attached to her nipples. And I was laughing my ass off. I'm like, that's probably what they're searching for. <laughs> Oh my god! It's just, just looking at this side, it's like, 
Twitch streamers, porn for women, HD sex, fidget spinner, 1080p, <laughs> ghetto <laughs> booty. Yeah, naked girls <laughs> twerking. It's hilarious. Like Indian, uh, Indian wife. Yeah, Holy surprise God. threesome, Japanese wife, surprise anal. Stop it. Stop. It's too big. <laughs> it is hilarious. Like, how they sit there and they keep a list of like what you're searching for, so they oh, know. Man. They know it, man. It, it, look, it's like Facebook, man. It's to the point where when you're gonna log into some of these tube sites that are bigger, they're gonna have your porn ready. It's gonna be, you know, I've had people tell me that they've talked, they've been around their phone and they'd say something like, "Man, I'm really interested in, uh, you know, getting a new radio or something like that." And next thing you know, when they go on Facebook, it's like, "Ooh, radio's on sale." They're like, "How, how did you? I, I didn't type that. I said it." Who, who's transmitting this shit? Google? Terry? Who, who the hell's doing this stuff to me? Well, and this is the thing that's really funny is when you look at um, – when you look at sit there and you think of like the and, – and somebody else did link to like – I don't think it was linked to there, but I remember uh, like reading a article that somebody wrote about it. And it was after – uh, Pornhub came out with this list and they said like oh it's interesting that people are looking for twitch streamers and what's hilarious is the guy sat there and, and was doing like if you sit there and you look at it ever since twitch came out with that irl channel he's like dude there are there are girls that are on that thing that are banking money like insane amounts because they do a patreon mm-hmm. and what's crazy is some of them don't even do any type of adult content and they have like and they say like by what they calculate these girls are making between six and eight thousand dollars a month doing this and they looked at one um what was her name um it's this chick called anaranth or something like that that she is a um she does uh like a lot of cosplay stuff but she also does a patreon and um in this Patreon, one of the levels, the perk levels, is like for sixty bucks a month. Um, hold on a sec. <laughs> she will do like nude photo shoots as well as like videos, and um, they were saying like she has something like five or six thousand, you know, people. Or no, it's it's she has like six or seven hundred people subscribed to her Patreon. And somebody was saying, uh, hold on. (laughs) Hold on, HQ is on. Hold on, let me give the the phone to the wifey off camera here. Hold on. (laughs) You know, I have to tell you. Come to the door. You you won't be seen. Sorry. I I didn't realize until just now that your cat's on your bed. Yeah. Like, I was looking and I was like, Wait, there's something moving on your bed. I'm yeah. like, oh, it's your kid. Yeah, she she freaking will. So that's what's funny. Like, it goes to show you. Like, we've had some fucking cold fucking winters up here this year, and you can see the fucking the covers we got out, and it's hilarious because she'll freaking sit there all day long because it's the warmest spot in the house. <laughs> oh mm. man, that's right. I got my pussy on camera. <laughs> I don't I don't know if you can set up a Patreon for that though. I don't know how well it would do. <laughs> but like, but that was like one of the or going back to what I was talking about, like that was one of the girls that he was like, yo, she's probably banking between six and eight thousand dollars easily a month just based on her because she it was funny because she was one of the the uh Twitch people that used to show how much she was making on Patreon through Patreon, and then she removed it. So they were like, yeah, she's probably making a fuck ton of money. She doesn't want people to know that she's making that much money, you know? But it's insane because, like, I laugh at looking at, like, I, I have subscribed to my YouTube, like, the uh, the Twitch stream fails, which are fucking hilarious to watch. And they'll always have, like, one clip of just one of the random Twitch girls. And it's hilarious to read in the comments how, like, people will be like, oh, they ought to, like, do porn and, like, you're always going to have that one comment guy go, why do they need to do porn when they're making fucking twice as much of what porn stars make just doing this IRL and wearing low cut shirts and just doing whatever? Well, you know, I guess you got to have both sides, right? You know, you have, you have the people who are like, 
you have the men messing with them and they just like, can you just treat me as an equal? And then you have the women like, hey, if that's how y'all want it, you're going to pay. Dude, the way I look at it is, you know what? Good for them in, you know, they're using what they got and they're getting money for it. And that's right. I mean, I wish I could sit there and fucking stream for eight hours a day just sitting in my house not doing nothing to make that kind of money. And let's face it, yes, sometimes, you know, they can go overboard and do stuff and you're just like, wow, that's kind of inappropriate. But for us, for all that, all the guys, so many of the guys are just jealous. They're just jealous that they can't do it or they don't, they're jealous they don't have someone that looks like them in their lives. Here's the thing. Here's the thing is they can only do so much because if they do too much, they'll get banned. And that's the thing is they'll only allow a certain amount of strikes before Twitch is like, all right, you're done. It's a you fine know? line to walk. Oh, yeah. It's a fine line to walk, but they make some money off of it, man. Let me tell you. All right. So that was our first show for 2018. But, you know, we're going to try to do more. <laughs> we we going to try. Real life has been tough. It, it has been tough. Like Life has been tough. But, you know, the good thing is that in between, we get a lot of stuff that we can collect so that we can bring it to you. And of course, we want y'all to send us stuff so that we can feature it on the show because we need y'all's input. Same things with your subscribes and likes, so make sure to do that. But until next time, I am J.A. He's Randy. Peace. Be that. Hey, guys, listen. You like the games? You like the interviews? You like the shows? How about you click on that subscribe button and also give us a like? We really need your help here, huh?